Hello, Hornada. How's everyone doing? Hi, Jerry. I don't think I've had everyone in the same room like this in a very long time, so it's good to see you all. Uh, I'm Jeff Gillen, for those who don't know me. Um, and I want to take you through just uh, one line of research I've been working off about four years. Uh, it's pretty incredible. I've actually been in the Hornada for four years almost. Um, so myself and, uh, and Jason, Carl, and a few other co-conspirators have been on this mission to see what range indicators we can measure and monitor with high resolution imagery. Um, and the, the target of this is these, uh, these very broad scale um, monitoring programs such as the BLM's AIM program or the National Resource Inventory. So the promise of remote sensing is that hopefully we can expand coverage, um, we can see more of the land, and then in some cases we're hoping it can actually improve the indicator measurement. So let me take you just through um, some previous research we've done in this regard. So we've done some, some work with uh, ground cover. You know, how can we measure what is actually on the ground? So think of it as kind of like a virtual line point intercept. So we start with really, really high res imagery. So like two or three centimeter ground sampling distance, so really high res stuff. And then we can overlay like these virtual transects. And a person can go you know, yellow dot by yellow dot here and they can just interpret uh, what's there. Is it, is it bare ground? Is it shrub? Is it, is it a rock? Whatever. Um, and so we've actually had a little bit of success uh, comparing that to actual field work and actual line point intercept. So this graph over here is showing a uh, comparison. These pale bars are, are the field work or line point intercept down the field. And the, uh, the uh, dark bars are, are the image interpretation. So you can see we have some pretty good agreement when it comes to these um, uh, life forms. What are your herbaceous, litter, and no veg? And that's basically the level we're able to get. We're not able to really say what kind of species is out there. I, I can't identify a specific form, for instance. But for the life forms, we're, we're doing a pretty good job. Uh, litter has this little asterisk because a lot of times we can't tell if uh, the vegetation is attached or not. So there are some limitations to what we're doing. So let's move on to the next one. So besides uh, cover, um, Jason did a paper a few years ago on intercanopy gap. And this all starts with image interpretation again. You know, just a person looking at an image and saying, what is there? Um, and once we have this, this data, uh, we can train a uh, classification to see uh, or take our images and, and say, what is vegetation, what is non-veg? And we can lay some virtual lines again and, and, qu and quantify what the vegetation gaps are. I think Jason has some pretty good uh, success with this as well. So what else? Uh, we've been working on vegetation height. I uh, did some work in Lake Mead um, regarding this. So vegetation height is one of those indicators that's notoriously really difficult to measure in the field. It's really hard to, you know, to say what the structure of a, of a bush is. Um, so we think there's some advantages to doing it from the air. So this is all done with photogrammetry, and these are point clouds that you're looking at. So we take overlapping images, and we do a bunch of jujitsu and, and geometry, and uh, we can come up with these. <laughs> um, it's not a perfect one-to-one. -one. I can't perfectly model a shrub, but I can get basically the, the core and, and uh, most of what it is. I can't get the little spindly uh, uh, branches sometimes, but we think this has a lot of potential for, for measuring and monitoring wildlife habitat, like for sage grouse and others. What else? Uh, soil erosion is another one I've been working on uh, from high-res aerial imagery. So we're using, we're using a, a technique called digital elevation model differencing. So this thing um, can enable us to visualize and quantify soil in a way that we can't really do out in the field. <coughs> so what I mean by that is we, we make a high-res elevation model um, uh, at one point in time. All right? Then we make another one at, at the same place at another point in time. If we take the two images and put one on top of the other one and subtract them, or differencing, we can create a, an elevation or a DEM difference product. And so this gives us a great visual that we can't normally get. All right, so this is about a 31 hectare uh, piece of land in uh, Shea Mesa, Utah. Um, and these orange colors are rep representing areas of soil deposition. So the soil elevation is higher in 2010 than it was in 2009. And the blue is showing the exact opposite. It's showing um, erosion. So areas that were scoured away or lower than they were the year before. So besides a good visual, um, we can, it can help us quantify. So this little uh, square over here 
So when it came to the whole study area, we, we found that there was 165 tons per, tons per hectare uh, eroded or gone off of the site. Uh, we had a deposition of 117, and that gives us a net loss of, of 48 tons per hectare over this. So an incredible amount of soil was moving. Um, and these kind of metrics are just things you can't really do with uh, uh, erosion bridges or um, you know, silt fences or any, any other ways to gather, normally gather um, soil erosion information. All right, so what are we doing nowadays? So I'm still working on the soil erosion one. Uh, this time I wanted to do it from the BAT-4. Um, it gives a kind of a, a cool aspect that it's from an unmanned aerial vehicle. So we're using the BAT-4. Uh, we're basically doing the same thing. Uh, we're trying to see if we can quantify the movement of soil. Uh, we have some good field work thanks to, to Brad and uh, Justin. They've been out in the track site doing these erosion bridges. If you're not familiar, an erosion bridge is a, is a metal beam suspended above the ground. You shoot a laser range finder, you can get an elevation profile. And if we do it over time, you can see how the land changes. Uh, so we wanted to take Justin and Brad's erosion bridge data and compare it to our aerial DEMs and see if we, you know, how well are we doing? I uh, just want to give you an example. Um, so this graph is showing an erosion, or showing an elevation profile. Uh, the red line is the erosion bridge and the white line is the, L or is the aerial DEM. So you can see there's a whole lot of agreement. Basically, we can mimic um, the elevation um, topography in the aerial images that, that Brad and uh, Justin are doing from the, from the erosion bridges. So that's basically as far as we've gotten with that one. We're going to do another visit here next month, hopefully, and, and see how well we can quantify the change, the topographical change over time. So I've become really obsessed with multi-rotor UIS, as Jason <laughs> and other people around me can attest. <laughs> um, so we think this has a lot of potential for, for rangeland remote sensing application. It's, it's a very different tool than, um, than the BAT-4. It doesn't, it doesn't make the BAT-4 obsolete. It's just something, it's something different. It's really inexpensive. Um, the thing I love about it, it's, it's really portable. And we want to try to do research to see if this could be useful for field crews. Uh, one person can operate it. Um, yeah, so that's my little hobby I do in my spare time. And looking forward, um, so we're taking everything we know about uh, what we can and cannot measure from high-res imagery. We're trying to now um, implement this with the BLM's assessment inventory <coughs> monitoring strategy. So if you're not familiar, the AIM strategy is trying to monitor and characterize BLM lands. You know, all, what is it, 260 million acres of it, it's a whole lot of land. And we think there's, there should be a remote sensing component. It's, we're really in the early stages and it's pretty wide open at this point. Um, but I think my interest in it is to see if we can uh, start with UAV imagery, um, see what kind of indicators we can measure from that, and then see how then we can uh, scale that to something bigger like Landsat or MODIS imagery. So we can get a very, very large a uh, broad scale view over of uh, how the rangelands have changed over time. So some, some questions I have. Um, can we use this US, UAS technology to provide an effective and efficient means for expanding sampling intensity? Because um, currently right now we're just doing uh, field work. Just doing field work. <coughs> which core indicators can we reliably measure over time with this high res, res approach? Which, indi or which ecosystems work well, which do not? How precisely can we detect uh, indicator change? Uh, what's, what's the best equipment? You know, which platforms, which sensors? Uh, all that kind of stuff is what we're exploring. And a big one is how can we quickly process this stuff? Because we're gonna have a huge glut of, of data. You know, how do we deal with it? And then how do we uh, take the UAS and scale it up to something bigger that we can you know, put on a, a broader scale? So that's kind of where we're going right now with it. Um, Stay tuned. <laughs>